I'm John Walsh from the seat of justice in Palm Beach County. People have been talking about it all over America all week as one of your most amazing captures ever. It certainly has the farthest reaching implications. Virgilio Paz, suspected of taking part in a horrible car bombing in the middle of Washington, D.C. He was on the run for 13 years. But right here in West Palm Beach, Paz came before a judge in handcuffs this week, an accused political assassin finally facing justice. And your tips led authorities right to him, just three days after we aired his profile. Virgilio Paz was arrested by the Federal Joint Terrorism Task Force early Tuesday morning in Boynton Beach, Florida, 10 miles south of Palm Beach. He is charged with murder. Last week, we showed you the story behind the murder. September 11, 1973, the Marxist government of President Salvador Allende was overthrown when General Augusto Pinochet led a military attack on the presidential palace. Allende and many of his top leaders died in the assault. Thousands more were arrested, including the former ambassador to the U.S., Orlando Letelier. Suspension of military aid to the Chilean military dictatorship was a small victory. Letelier returned to Washington after spending two years in prison, and he became an outspoken and effective critic of the Pinochet regime. A peaceful end to the tragedy in Chile. July 1976, the FBI says Chile's Secret Service ordered yeah, undercover yeah. operative Michael Vernon Townley to assassinate Letelier. This assignment has been cleared at the highest levels. The FBI says Townley enlisted 24-year-old Virgilio Paz to help with the hit. Paz was a dedicated anti-communist, well-trained in the use of explosives. Very nice. You do excellent work. Sunday, September 19th. The FBI says Paz and Townley placed the bomb under Letelier's car. Tuesday morning, September 21st. Okay. Newlyweds Michael and Ronnie Moffat worked with Letelier. Moffat had borrowed his car the night before, came by to pick him up. Townley had left for Miami after planning the bomb. The FBI says Virgilio Paz and an accomplice stayed behind to finish the job. Shortly after our broadcast, a viewer called U.S. Customs in Miami and told federal agents where to find Paz. This is a significant apprehension. It all stemmed from Friday night's viewing of America's Most Wanted. Paz ran a landscaping business in Palm Beach County, Florida. Agents nabbed him on his way to work Tuesday morning. We allowed him, after seeing him in the vehicle, identifying him as such, allowed him to come up into this open area here so that we could box him in into the semicircular area. We boxed him in with five cars, effected the arrest without any incident. He openly admitted who he was and that he was very glad it was over. Paz was living under the alias Frank Baez, but that wasn't the only name he used on the run. He came to work for us. He had one name. And a little while later, he came back and told us that he had his name wasn't what he had originally told us, and he wanted us to call him Ronald. Ronald. And it was Ronald O. McDonald O. Paz lived here in Lake Worth with his wife and two children. I would have never expected it. Never in my life would I have expected him. He just did not seem to be the type of person that would have done it. The capture made headlines in the U.S. and in Chile. Isabel Letelier, Orlando's wife, heard the news in Santiago. I never thought that it was going to work. And it worked so fast that I'm really uh, amazed and uh, very grateful to this program. The capture of Paz is really one more 
brick in the wall of solving this case. Uh, Michael Moffat, been... whose wife Ronnie was also killed in the blast, is happy Paz was caught. But he wants the U.S. government to press Chile to extradite Manuel Contreras, the former head of Chile's secret police, and his deputy, Pedro Espinoza. Moffat says they are the real masterminds of the assassination. It seems to us that this is a straightforward case of state-sponsored terrorism and that the last message that the United States of America wants to send to would-be terrorists around the world is that if you stonewall and stall and run and hide, that the United States will lose interest in securing justice. We believe it's, it's the wrong signal to send. This capture, it, it's a fabulous tool to keep the case moving, to keep the case alive, to bring to the attention of the United States government and to the Congress that General Contreras and General Espinosa should be sent to a court. The capture of Paz has focused a lot of international attention on this case. The big question now is, will the capture put pressure on the Chilean government? The Pinochet regime. Thank you. We'll wrap up the report this afternoon. On September 21st, 1976, Letelier and two research associates, Ronnie and Michael Moffat, drove into Washington. The assassins were close behind. Letelier and Ronnie Moffat were killed in the blast that shook Embassy Row. Three days after our broadcast, agents got the break they needed. An anonymous tipster pinpointed Paz in South Florida. For 12 years, law enforcement has sought the return of Mr. Paz to stand trial on these charges. And after the uh, expose last spring by America's Most Wanted, uh, he was arrested and captured. We allowed him, after seeing him in the vehicle, identifying him as such, allowed him to come up into this open area here so that we could box him in into the semicircular area. We boxed him in with five cars, effected the arrest without any incident. He openly admitted who he was and that he was very glad it was over. That was April 23rd. This week, Virgilio Paz pleaded guilty to conspiracy charges in U.S. District Court. He did not uh, express any remorse. It was a straightforward acceptance of his role in the assassination. Uh, he admitted his responsibility, as I said, but he uh, did not at that time remorse. He now faces up to 12 years in prison. It's a significant step in holding those accountable for this act of terrorism on U.S. soil. Michael Moffat survived the bomb blast that killed his wife Ronnie and Ambassador Letelier in 1976. He told us this afternoon that he's grateful to those who helped capture Virgilio Paz, but he won't rest until justice in this case is complete. 